Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Umath again and today we want to have a look at the binomial functions and then relate them to Einstein. Actually we want to look at Einstein's famous formula E is equal to mc squared and relate it to Newtonian physics. Okay, and what we are using there are binomial functions. Now what are binomial functions? Binomial functions look like this and this is the simplest case with 1 plus x to the r. Okay, this is our function and we want to find the Taylor series to that. In the previous videos I always use some uh, tricky parts. I integrated the um, geometric series or I found out the function value of the geometric series itself. Um, but now I want to stick to the normal procedure for finding the Taylor series or better here because we want to evaluate f of x and x equals 0 um, we will uh, call this the Maclaurin series, or I'll, I'll just stick up, uh, stick to the Taylor series. Now, what we do is we find the first derivative. Differentiating this guy is pretty easy because it's just a power, so we have to use the power rule of differentiation. So the r will come in front, and we uh, subtract r by one, and we have this guy. If we plug in x equals zero, what will happen is that this guy will have a value of one plus zero, but one to any power is always one. So we are left with r only. Taking the second derivative you will get another term here. So we, we have this guy here and if we differentiate we get r minus 1 and we subtract 1 in, in the power so we get r minus 2. Again if we plug in 0 this guy will have a value of 1 plus 0, 1 and if you take 1 to any power it will still stay 1. So what we are left is only this kind of product. Then let's do the third derivative. If we do that, again we get this r minus 2 in front of our uh, brackets. Then we um, reduce the power by 1 and then plug in x equals 0. And again this guy will have a value of 1. And we are left with r multiplied with r minus 1, r minus 2. So this is the value of the third uh, derivative evaluated zero. Now it's pretty easy to see that if you take the nth derivative and evaluate that in zero that this is equal to a product r, r minus one, r minus two multiplied with da 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 multiplied with uh, r minus n plus one. Okay now uh, let's simply check this for n equals three so we have r multiplied with r minus one and we go for r minus three plus one r minus two is the last number and this is correct okay now if we plug that in into our uh, definition of the Taylor series or uh, the way how we can calculate the coefficients of the Taylor series it's pretty simple we take f um, the nth derivative of f and evaluate it at zero. Actually, this is this guy and divide this with n factorial and uh, this is our Taylor series multiplied with x to the n. Now, if uh, we write it down, it's looking a little bit complicated and it's hard to remember. Okay, that's the reason why I want to go ahead and simplify this a little bit and this is most commonly done. You are using the binomial coefficient. I hope you remember this from combinatorics. Uh, this is r over n or sometimes it's called n out of r. And what we are doing here is in order to calculate this we take r, this is this number here, we take this uh, as a factorial and divide it with n factorial and multiply it with r minus n factorial. Okay, as it actually you see r is here and minus n so if you write it down in another way then you get this kind of representation because we you can see that r minus n factorial has a lot of terms in this r factorial to be uh, very precise you have all the values of this guy um, until r minus n plus one this is the first term that is not included in this guy so this is the end and uh, actually r is not included here also. Okay so we get r multiplied with r minus 1, r minus 2 multiplied with dot 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 my, multiplied with r minus n plus n over n. We can use this kind of representation which is 
much much better than this uh, unhandy representation. Now let's write it down. So we found out that f of x of a binomial function is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. This binomial coefficient, remember this, this is uh, such a product. I always remember it that you just subtract all the time um, you start with R and then subtract as often as this N is. For example, if it is N, if, for example, if N is equal to 2, then you have to subtract twice, okay? Mm, not, not subtract twice, but uh, have two terms in there. If N is equal to 1, then you have one term and so forth. Now, very important again here that the magnitude of X is smaller than 1. You can show this by using convergence criteria. I don't bother about this. And um, I will do a very important thing or better, very interesting thing. I will plug in for R, I will plug in minus one half. Okay, and if we want to calculate this Taylor series, then we have to use the sum from zero to infinity. Here we plug in minus one half N, and then here for X, because we are not actually calculating one plus X, we are calculating one minus X, we have to right here minus x to the n. Now what you see is for all odd values we will get a negative sign and for all even values we will get a positive sign. Now let's have a look on the left hand side. What is this actually? This is nothing else than this guy here, 1 over square root of 1 minus x. Why is that so? Because this minus means take the inverse of this number here, so the inverse would be 1 over 1 minus x and then we have to take the square root of this guy here because 1 over 2 means take the square root 1 over 3 would be the third uh, the cubic root and so forth if you have 1 over 4 that would mean the fourth root now let's plug it in into this equation so we have the first term is 1 pretty easy to see because 0 here 0 here and um, uh, we will just end up having 1 for the first term. This is uh, almost uh, always uh, like this. This is the normal rule for the binomial coefficient. If you have no 0 in here, then um, this is pretty easy. Then go plus 1. We have this term. And now remember how we can calculate these guys here. Okay, These guys were, um, if we have n factorial here as 1, then we have to have one term in there. And this is just simply r. And our r was 1 over minus 1 over 2. Now here minus x. Now we go to plus and here the factorial is 2 so we have two terms so we start off with r subtract 1 from r and we get minus uh, 3 over 2. Now here again x cubed and remember because it's uh, not x cubed but x squared because it's a 2 this uh, minus will cancel and we get a plus in front. Now the, if we have the third term here Actually, it's the fourth term, but uh, the 3 factorial in here, we have uh, to have 3 um, terms in here. We start off with r, minus 1 over 2. We subtract 1, minus 3 over 2, and we subtract again, minus 5 over 2. And again, we have here in the brackets, minus x cubed. And remember, because it's cubed, this sign will come out of this integral. Not integral, but out of this expression. And now what you see magically, all these negative signs will always cancel. For example, here, this sign and this sign will cancel. We get plus 1 half x, because 1 factorial is just 1. Now here we get minus minus will cancel. We get plus. We get 3 over 8. Okay, just calculate this together. Then this guy here, minus, 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 and here again a minus will give us a positive number. And this will simplify to uh, 5 over 16 and so forth. So what we found out is 1 over square root of 1 minus x is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2x plus 3 over 8x squared plus 5 over 16x cubed and so forth. And we will now use this um, for Einstein's equation. Okay, very important. You could uh, try to remember that that the easiest way to do this actually if you have uh, a 1 over square root uh, of 1 minus x. If your x is pretty pretty small then you can always estimate this by 1 plus 1 half x. 
okay um, you can even generalize this to if you have the nth root of this guy then it's 1 over n actually always but never mind so we will just remember this guy and go to Einstein's equation. Einstein's equation if you know uh, many people of you should know this but many of you might not know this guy actually many of you might know this because you are watching such nerdy videos so <laughs> actually you might know this so E the total energy of a particle or something like this is um, um, equivalent to the mass multiplied with the light speed of light to the square okay we don't care about the physical interpretation right now I'm just doing a little mathematical stuff with this now first of all um, it is known that this mass is dependent uh, depending on the velocity or better the ratio of your velocity compared to the velocity of light so we can rewrite this as m0 over square root of 1 minus v over c squared sometimes this v over c uh, so the velocity over the speed of light this ratio is called gamma but I'll stick to this as it is simpler now what we will do is and now you might remember we had something like this on the slide before we had 1 over square root of 1 minus x didn't we now let's just use this kind of um, Taylor series on this guy and see what happens very importantly for us is to say that um, we can write this guy here 1 over square root of uh, 1 minus x as 1 plus 1 half x plus higher order terms we don't bother about them I just write them down in this manner and I will explain you why we don't bother because our v over c that we will plug in is pretty small because we want to look at very small speeds and see what happens with this energy term and actually if you have very small values in here if you take a very small value and take the square of uh, the cube of it uh, sorry the square of it it will be very very tiny and negligible so to say so we want to use this and plug it into this equation and replace this 1 over square root of 1 minus v over c squared expression so what do we get we get 1 plus 1 half and then we have to uh, plug in x but our x is v over c squared plus higher order terms and now you see why this is even less important these higher order terms because we have already v over c to the square and um, this means in the next part would be v over c to the fourth power and which is almost negligible if you are uh, walking or um, driving with 100 miles per hour or something like this it doesn't matter so the higher order terms are not that much important now let's multiply things out and see what happens we get the energy is equal to m0 this is uh, called all the motionless mass so if you are not moving at all um, multiplied with c squared then we get plus one half and now see what magically happens is we get m0 this c squared and this c squared and uh, will cancel and we are left with v squared plus m0 uh, c squared with higher uh, order terms and like I told you these are not important for our thinking but if you look at this guy this is nothing else than the kinetic energy okay this is nothing else than the kinetic energy term for a particle which is moving with a velocity of v but this is the Newtonian kind of representation so what we see in here is the Newtonian kinetic energy is incorporated in Einstein's equation okay uh, I hope some of you have ask themselves how can this be that Newton was so wrong actually Newton was not wrong he only did the first <laughs> the first term actually the first non constant term in the tail series and uh, this is Newtonian physics if you add higher order terms you will end up having Einstein's equation so this means that Einstein's equation is more general uh, than Newtonian physics and uh, there are not something else than uh, Newtonian physics there are the generalization
because we go from very slow speeds to also higher speeds with these higher terms because the higher your velocity gets the less negligible these higher order terms become okay and actually that's it I hope you had fun and you enjoyed this video I know this is really really tough stuff but I think it's also very very interesting to see mathematics and physics come together and I like this a lot because uh, now you see that Einstein's stuff is quite the same as Newtonian kinetic energy but with lots more uh, parts in its Taylor series okay I hope you had fun like always and if you have still some questions concerning this video please feel free to ask and um, that's actually it I hope you had um, a lot of fun here okay so see you guys